This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Last day we ended with uh, drug molecules, different types, all these types will be uh, are discussed. In this class, uh, there will be discussion related to the other two chemicals. One is used in uh, food, that is chemicals that are added to food. And the other one is different types of cleansing agents. So what is food additive? So as the name suggests, food additive, that means some compounds will be added to food. But what is the purpose of this? That we have to know. So all those chemicals that are added to food externally to increase shelf life, that means we can keep this food for a long time to keep it freshness intact. Then enhance sensory value, that is uh, color, texture, flavor, etc. And also nutritive health. So all these different types of compounds that are added to food for all these different types of purposes, combinedly they are called food additives. Now, obviously these are not naturally part of food. We are adding it externally, fine? So here we have all the categories under food additive. So it may be food color, which is to increase obviously the appeal of the food, then flavor, sweetness, fat emulsifier stabilizing agent, food improver and antioxidant preservative nutritional supplement. Now the last one, that is if we consider this, except for this last type, that is except for the nutritional supplements, if you consider all the other types, there is no ex extra nutritive value. So it is only for the last one, fine? Now in this uh, chapter, not all the food additives will be discussed, in our syllabus, there is only artificial sweetener. This is the first food additive that will be discussed. Then preservative and antioxidant. These three will be discussed mainly. Fine. What are the advantages of these different types of food additives? Uses of preservatives reduces the product spoilage. So this is preservative. Product spoilage we can uh, control. And in this way, the shelf life of the food will be increased. Then addition of vitamins and minerals, it will reduce the malnutrition, lack of nutrition, fine. Then flavoring agent, which is uh, in, for enhancing the aroma of the food and antioxidant, they prevent the formation of potentially toxic oxidation products. So sometimes if food is kept for long in uh, presence of oxygen, then this oxygen can react with this food materials and as a result there will be some toxic chemical generation and it is specially for uh, lipid type of food okay so oxidation product of lipids and other food constituent so to control this to uh, control this production of toxic compounds antioxidants are added so that will also be discussed in detail antioxidant then food preservative and artificial sweetener so among these three, first we will focus on artificial sweetener. Artificial sweetener, we know that sucrose is the main reason for any type of sweet taste that we get in any food, right? But that is natural. But some people prefer to use artificial sweetener for sweetening purpose in food. And when we can, that is, it is required because sucrose, if we add it, there is some calorie intake always related to it, right? But if we don't want to take this extra calorie and still want this sweetness, then artificial sweetener will be required. So these synthetic compounds, they causes a sweet sensation just like sucrose, but they do not possess any nutritional value. Even if it possesses, that is very, very negligible, fine? So there is no nutritional value, but it's just... Uh, causing a sweet taste just like sucrose and under this artificial sweetener different examples you can see the names saccharine aspartame sucralose alitem etc the first one we are going to discuss under artificial sweetener is saccharine saccharine is also known as orthosulfobenzimide if we look at the structure it will be clear why the name is so so in ortho position of benzene ring there are two groups and they are connected to each other now this is most popular artificial sweetener and if you compare uh, there that is how much sweeter it is it is 550 times sweeter than sugar 
So this is the structure of orthosulfobenzimide or saccharide. Here CONH dense SO2 group is present, but if you individually look at these substituents, it is at one and two position. So that is it is ortho. Sulfur benzimide. So as if this, this is sulfur and this part is benzimide. Okay. Now, if we replace this H and instead if we have the sodium salt of this saccharine molecule, then that will have more water solubility because now it is in metal salt form. So normal saccharine molecule is insoluble in water. So it is sold in the market in form of sodium salt or it may be calcium salt also. And it is non-biodegradable. There is no calorific value of food for this molecule. Now it's use of great value if there is any diabetic person because they cannot take sucrose. But still if they want to get the sweetness of food, so in this molecule can be uh, used. And also for those persons who need to control the calorie intake. Okay, so for these two types of people, artificial sweetener like saccharin is useful. The second artificial sweetener is aspartate. Now this molecule is methyl ester of dipeptide. Now dipeptide means two amino acid molecules will be connected by a peptide bond. Which two amino acid? One is phenylalanine amino acid, another one is aspartic amino. Now these two amino acid together it will make peptide bond that is CONH bond. And one side will be carbon terminal, C terminal, another one will be N terminal or amine group will be present. Now the side where CO2H group is present, that CO2H group, if it is having any methyl ester, uh, that is just consider any carboxylic acid, suppose R CO2H. So in RCO2H, if this H is replaced by any alkyl group, suppose RCO2Me or RCO2Ethyl ET, then we can call it methyl ester or ethyl ester. So in this case also, first you have to consider the dipeptide molecule and the OH group is now in the methyl, uh, that is OCH3 form, not OH form. So here the green part is basically coming from phenylalanine and this is the carbon terminal or C terminal. And the brown part is coming from aspartic acid, where the N terminal is this free NH2. So in case of aspartic acid, the side chain of the amino acid is CH2, C double OH. In case of phenylalanine, the side chain is benzyl group, pH ring, then CH2. Okay, so these two are the two different amino acid. This is the amide bond or peptide bond. And the C-terminal carboxylic acid, it is in methyl ester form. So this is the structure of aspartate. 100 times sweeter than sucrose. It decomposes at baking temperature or cooking temperature. And that is the reason we cannot use this molecule when for any hot food. That means the food that we have to provide heat during preparation. But we can use it for cold food soft drinks in cold condition like this. So this is one disadvantage we can say because during baking or cooking temperature, which is obviously high, uh, this will be decomposed. So sweetness uh, will be gone. So that is why we can use it only for cold food. It is having same amount of calories and sugar. This can, you can say another advantage because in the previous example we have seen, there is no such calorie intake. Uh, present so that is why diabetic patient or those people who cannot take uh, high calorie food for those people this is useful but in this case it is having same amount of calories as sugar which is almost near about four calorie per gram or if it is 100 gram it is near around 400 calories okay then there is some people who cannot take this uh, sweetener as artificial sweetener which case it should not be used by those people who are suffering from the genetic disease, which is known as PKU. In short, it is PKU, actual name is phenyl ketone urea. Because when there is metabolism occurring, this molecule, okay, what will happen? 
sorry not this one i'm saying that this disease suppose someone is suffering from this now during metabolism what will happen this aspartame molecule it will be converted to phenyl pyruvic acid molecule now what is phenyl pyruvic acid you can see this is the picture ph ch2 cooh so aspartame will be converted to phenyl pyruvic acid during metabolism now this phenyl pyruvic acid once it is formed it is very harmful to infants especially and also for those who will be suffering from pku because it causes brain damage and mental retardation so in this case those people who are having this disease uh, aspartame should not be consumed third artificial sweetener alike it is quite similar to aspartame now quite similar means if you look at the structure you will find some similarity but obviously it is not not same molecule but there is some similarity it is more stable than aspartame so this is the structure here also we have co2h group nh2 group but we have this type of uh, group also cyclic 3c this is a four member ring three carbon one sulfur so there is obviously some difference but there is also some similarity it is 2000 times sweeter than sucrose so it is very high now as it is very high there is another problem regarding this because of this high potency sweetener high potency sweetener because compared to the other examples that we have seen it is very very that is this value is very high right so because of this high potency sweetener it is difficult to control when we are adding it to food as artificial sweetener the amount that we are adding, adding we have to be very careful if somehow it is more uh, by accident if we are adding more it will be very sweet because it is 2000 times sweeter the fourth molecule is sucralose now sucralose the name is basically derived from sucrose because it is actually trichloro derivative of sucrose so in sucrose molecule there are some oh group some oh group that is three oh group is in chloride form so that is it is trichloro derivative 600 times sweeter than sucrose now its appearance and taste just like sugar stable at cooking temperature unlike we have seen in case of aspartame which is not stable at cooking or baking temperature so in this case that is not a problem it neither provides calories nor cause any tooth decay so these are some advantage here you can see the structure of sucrose now this oh second oh is third oh these three groups are that is oh groups are chloro so that is why it is sucralose that is the only difference in if you compare their structure as if it is derived from sucrose structure fine so this is sucralose the fourth one cyclamate it is about 30 times sweeter than sucrose not very high now if we combine cyclamate and saccharin in the ratio 10 is to 1 cyclamate 10 saccharin 1 if we add in this ratio now that is significantly sweeter than either of these two substances alone so when you are adding uh, only saccharin as artificial sweetener or you are adding cyclamate as artificial sweet but when you are adding a third possibility 10 is to 1 ratio of cyclamate and saccharin now what will happen because of this combined nature there will be significant uh, increase in sweetness fine so obviously this uh, ratio when we are adding these two compounds it is better uh, artificial sweet it is soluble in water but if you want to increase its solubility then this oh can be converted to the uh, salt form so this is basically so3h2 sulfonic acid but now it is so3na that is the only difference so this is a sodium form salt form you can also have calcium salt form now calcium as it has two plus oxidation state so there will be another molecule of Uh, this part that is the anionic part should be two times to balance two positive charge okay so we have we have seen total five artificial sweetener molecules question which one of the following is an example of 
artificial sweetener. So here we have four options. And among these four options, only one will be artificial sweet. Bithyonel salvarsan ali tame lactose. Now lactose is obviously uh, not. It, it, we have uh, learned this molecule in carbohydrate chain, right? Not here. Now bithyonan and salvarsan, these two are under micro uh, bile, antiseptic, antibiotic, remember? So these are examples of those drugs, but they are not artificial sweet. Here, artificial sweetener is a little. So, after finishing artificial sweetener, next is food preservative. Now, food preservative are the chemical substances. They are capable of inhibiting, retarding, or arresting the process of fermentation process, acidification process, or decomposition of food because of presence of bacteria, yeast, or mold, which is a kind of fungi. All these substances, which are capable of all this inhibition, retardation, arresting, they will be called together preservatives. Now we have two classes. One is class one preservative, which is basically natural. Class two preservative, which are not natural, which are man-made. When it is class one preservative, they are basically some compounds which are easily available in any kitchen, like table salt, sugar, vegetable oil, like this. Fine. They are compared to class two preservative. They are obviously safer. Uh, that is, if we consider which one is most safe to use, obviously it is class one. Now the class two, which is man-made, which what type of compounds we have? Sorbate, sulfite, benzoate. So all are in salt form. Sorbate is basically the salt of sorbic acid. Then we'll also see sulfite, which is sulfite containing sulfite group, and benzoate. That means benzoic acid, it's salt form. All these compounds are under class two preservatives. Now under class two, here we'll see some examples. Alkyl ester of hydroxybenzoic acid. Benzoic acid is pH. C O two H pH C O two H. Now, when we are saying hydroxybenzoic acid, that means some OH group will be present also in the benzene ring. There is also mention of alkyl ester. That means some the benzoic acid C O two H group is present. Now this CO2H, this H will be replaced by some alkyl group. So that is why it is alkyl ester of hydroxybenzoic acid. Now this type of food preservative you can use only in less acidic condition. If it is in high acidic condition, it will not work. Then we have acetic acid, which is nothing but vinegar, mainly used as preservative for the preparation of pickles and for preserving some vegetables. Sodium benzoate, which is sodium salt of benzoic acid. So PHCO2H, this H will be sodium. Then it is sodium benzoate. It is the most commonly used preservative used in soft drink, acidic foods. Then sodium metabisulfite. See, sulfite, this is present. Uh, that is the sulfite salt. It is used as preservative in food like jams, pickles, washes, and sorbic acid and its salt, which is so basically sorbate. They are used in several foods like cheese, baked food, satin meat, etc. Now, all these names that you are seeing here, we will see their structure. The first one is alkyl esters of hydroxy benzoic acid. So here you can see methyl paraben, ethyl paraben, and uh, propyl paraben. So paraben is basically para hydroxy benzoic acid. Now, para hydroxy benzoic acid, this CO2H group is now converted to methyl ester. In this case, it is ethyl ester. In this case, it is propyl ester. So, some alkyl groups are present. So, that is why it is alkyl ester of hydroxy benzoic acid, which is when it is at four position, para position, it is called paraben. It may be methyl paraben, ethyl paraben, propyl paraben, depending on what type of alkyl groups are present. Next, this picture is sodium benzoate, which is Sodium salt of benzoic acid. 
sorbic acid and its salt so this is the structure of sorbic acid uh, we have some unsaturation and then co2 is group now if this h is removed there is negative charge over oxygen it is forming salt with calcium 2 plus salt now to balance this two positive charge we need two sorbate ion so that is why this sorbate ion it is within third bracket and it is two times present and sodium sulfide as uh, we have seen in the previous slide so here if you want to write the formula it is na2h2o5 okay so in sodium metasulfide sorry sodium metasulfide here we have sulfur sulfur bond okay after food preservative antioxidant now antioxidants are those substances as the name suggests antioxidant that means it will inhibit the oxidation process it retards the oxidative deterioration of food or you can say the action of oxygen on food so some foods they are prone to oxidation when it is in presence of oxygen now if we add antioxidant now what will happen now these antioxidant molecules will be reacting with oxygen rather than the food material in which all these antioxidants are added because compared to food material these antioxidants are more prone for reaction towards oxygen so that is why it is uh, antioxidant when it is present these food materials these molecules are not reacting with oxygen but antioxidant is reacting with oxygen and as a result what is happening there is no action of oxygen on food so in this way we can inhibit the oxidative deterioration of food okay here we will see the examples mostly what type of foods are easily oxidized or turn rancid rancid means unpleasantness in taste or uh, that is flavor etc fine smell also bad smell so foods containing fat and oils they are prone to this type of oxidation and they easily there is uh, rancidity occurring now to prevent this we use bht or bha full names are butyl hydroxy toluene toluene is benzene ring and cht group but there will be also oh group and butyl group four carbon then bha which is butylated hydroxy anisole anisole is benzene ring ome ring uh, ome group is present here also butyl group and hydroxy these two will be present so these are examples of antioxidants so see butyl hydroxy toluene which is this one so hydroxy group then butyl group now butyl group it is actually in tertiary butyl form it is not linear chain butyl okay so this is cme3 group this is another cme3 group and another one is butylated hydroxy anisole so benzene ring with ome group this is actually anisole but here we also have oh group and butyl group which is actually not linear butyl it is tertiary butyl now these materials there is these two molecules they readily undergo oxidation by reacting with free radicals that are generated by the oxidation of oils so as a result once these free radicals are uh, reacting with bht or bha now the chain reaction will be stopped once the chain reaction which is involving these radicals that is odd electron present over molecule once this chain reaction is stopped then this oxidation of food is no longer possible some other types of antioxidants sulfur dioxide or sulfide salt they are also useful antioxidant for wine beer sugar syrup cut peeled or dried fruits and vegetables here we have a problem which is uh, regarding artificial sweetener a chemist has four samples of artificial sweetener a b c and d now to identify this sample he performs some experiment what are the experiment c the first observation is a and d these two artificial sweetener they are forming blue violet color with neon hydrine now neon hydrine in presence of neon hydrine when you get blue violet color that means 
Here, phi in each two group is present. Here, P P and H2 groups are present. Then, Lassani trace extract C of C, it is giving positive AgNO3 test. Now, positive AgNO3 test means there must be presence of uh, chlorine. So it proves there must be presence of chlorine, but negative Fe, Fe, Fe4, FeCN6 whole 3 test. Now this means that nitrogen atom is not present. Negative test means nitrogen atom not present. But AgNO3 positive test means chlorine must be present. Okay. So from C, we are getting this observation. Then from B and D, we are getting the observation that Lassane extract of B and D, it is giving positive sodium nitroxide test. Now, positive sodium nitroxide test means presence of sulfur is indicated. Okay. Now, we have different options for this four sweetener, A, B, C, D, and the four uh, molecules are all are basically artificial sweetener. But A, which artificial sweetener, or B, which are artificial sweetener, that we have to find. Okay. So we have total four names, alitem, saccharin, aspartame, sucralose, okay? Remember, in sucralose, we have seen it is dairy trichloro derivative of sucrose, right? Now, if it is so, that means it should give positive uh, AgNO3 test because of presence of chlorine. Now, that means C, because only C is giving this test. So C must be sucralose, now, if C is sucralose, that you can find only in option 4. So, in this way also, you can, that is, if you are sure about this fact, that is, other facts, if we are confused, and but if you are sure about this fact, that uh, sucralose is containing chlorine, and only C is giving positive test of AgNO3, that means chlorine is present, and C as sucralose is present only in option 4, right? Now, if option 4 is correct, that means aspartate, which is A, there is NH2 group present. Remember, it is a dipeptide, and it is actually methyl ester of dipeptide. Our free NH2 group is present, that means nin hydrin test must be positive, right? Then D, alitem, here also NH2 group is present, because alitem has some similarity with the structure of aspartate. In each two group present, so mean hydrogen should be positive. A and D both are positive. So it is also matching. Now B and D both are giving sodium hydroxide test. Now in alitem, remember, though it has similarity with aspartame, but there is a four member ring also containing sulfur atom. So it should give positive nitroxide test. And B, which is saccharin, there are also sulfur is present. Remember, it is ortho benzo sulfinimide where sulfur is present, right? So now we will see all these molecules simultaneously. Aspartame, it is giving nin hydrogen test positive, that means free NH2 group present. It is actually methyl ester of dipeptide. And the dipeptide is consists of two amino acid, one is aspartic acid, another part is phenyl alan. And this C terminal CO2H group, it is in methyl ester form. But the important point is, presence of NH2. For this, this test is uh, positive. Okay. Then we have saccharin. Now in saccharin, because of this type of structure, there is sulfur present, sodium nitroxide test will be positive. Then C, which is sucralose, but remember it is trichloro derivative of sucrose. So we have Three chlorine, it will give positive test with AgNO3 because of AgCl precipitation formation. Negative test means nitrogen is absent. And uh, the last one, it has some similarity in structure with aspartame. Here also, nin hydrogen test positive because of presence of free NH2 and because of presence of sulfur, it will give sodium hydroxide test positive. So it will be ABCD aspartame. Saccharin, sucralose, 
Ali Tim. So this should be the correct option. Option four. Match list one with list two. In list one, we have some class of chemicals. Anti-fertility drug, antibiotic, tranquilizer. So first three are drug. Last one is artificial sweet. And there are some uh, name of the molecules. We have to match these two. Now, artificial sweetener, we have just finished, right? So obviously it is alitem. So D is matching with two. Now, if D is matching with two, just look at the option. D1, D2, D1, D3. So it is only present here. So here also, if we are confirmed that artificial sweetener here is alitem, not the other three, that is meprobamate, norethidrone, salvarsan, but alitem only, then also you can choose option B as correct option. But we will also see the others. Anti-fertility drug A is basically norethidrone. There are not many names of under anti fertility so you can easily remember this and antibiotic is uh, salvarsan and tranquilizer is meprobamid so if we consider all this you will see it is matching with a3 that is norethidrone b is 4 which is salvarsan the last one Tranquilizer is first one, C is matching with one and D with two, artificial sweet. But just based on this last information also, we can choose the correct option because when D is two, that is present only in option B. Okay, so here correct option, second one. So after finishing artificial sweet and uh, antioxidant preservative, all these are related to food chemicals. After finishing all this, now we are starting cleansing agents. The under this cleansing agent, we will basically study two molecules. One is soap molecules, another one is synthetic detergent. Now, this detergent is derived from the Latin word detergere, which means to wipe off. That means it is wiping off some dirt, okay, or grease. So, cleansing agents, which are also known as surfactants. They are basically substance which can remove dirt and they have cleansing action in presence of water. So mainly two types are there. First we'll see what are soaps. Soaps are sodium or potassium salt of higher fatty acid. What are fatty acid? Some examples are given. Now in fatty acid, if you look at the structure, you will see there is obviously CO2 each group present. And there is a long chain. So in short, if I write RCO2H, this R group is very, very long chain like this. Sometimes there may be CC double bond also. Sometimes it may not be. But remember, this is a very long hydrocarbon chain. And then in the terminal position, there is CO2H group. So these molecules are basically fatty acid, higher fatty acid, high number of carbon chain. But it is in sodium or potassium salt form. So this H, it is in sodium or potassium salt form. So this is the structure of soap molecules. They are sodium or potassium salt of higher fatty acid like stearic, oleic, pimitic acid. Now if it is sodium salt, they are basically hard soap. If it is potassium salt, then it is soft soap. Now only sodium and potassium soaps are soluble in water. So that is why when we, you are seeing the definition, basically only uh, sodium and potassium, these two metals are mentioned. It is not magnesium or calcium. Because it, if it is magnesium and calcium, they are actually not water soluble. Only when it is sodium or potassium salt, then only it is soluble in water. And it is it will be useful for cleaning purpose in aqueous medium, right? So only sodium salt or potassium salt. Hard soaps are prepared that is the sodium salt, they are prepared by cheaper oil and sodium hydroxide. But if it is soft soap, they are prepared by good quality oil and potassium hydroxide. In soap molecules, uh, that is soft soap molecules, there is no free alkali. That is extra NaOH or KOH not present. It produces more leather and 
the soft soaps are speci specifically used for toilet soap, saving soap, or sap. But leather generation is very important. Okay. Now, next we'll see how we can prepare soap. We are starting from fat, which is triglyceride. If you look at the molecule properly, you will find some ester linkage. So these are the ester linkage. And the alcoholic part is coming from left hand side. And the acid part is coming from right hand side. And if you consider this is as R group, all the R groups are same. And in the R group, basically we have total 15 carbon. 14 CH2 group, one methyl, that means total 15 carbon. So it is having total number of carbon in this acidic part. It is 15. Now, in presence of NaOH, 3 NaOH actually required. It is 1 is to 3. That is triglyceride. If you take 1 mole, you have to take 3 moles of NaOH. Because here we have to break total 3 ester groups, right? So, to break 3 ester group per molecule of triglyceride, we have to use 3 NaOH, right? So, here we are getting the alcoholic part free, which is nothing but glycerol. And the actual product which we, we are trying to make so now it is in the salt form because the medium is basic so in basic medium it cannot remain in co2h form so it will remain in co2na form so as if this is the r group you can also write it like this as if it is r co o n a where r group is ch2 whole 14 then ch2 total number of carbon 15 so this is known as sodium permittate because if you consider the acid, it is actually permitic acid. And as it is in sodium salt form, so that is it is sodium permitted. And as we know from the definition of soap, it is sodium or potassium salt of higher fatty acid. So see, this is the structure of soap. Now, once we are doing this reaction, which is also known as saponification, Next, what is done? Sodium chloride is added to the reaction mixture. And the purpose is to decrease the solubility of soap molecule. Okay, so once the solubility of soap is decreased in presence of salt, sodium chloride, they will be precipitated out from the aqua solution and we can easily separate them by filtering it out. Now in the solution, only glycerol is left. Now glycerol is also important molecule if you want to recover that, what we can do, the solution left after removal of the soap, which is already precipitated, you can filter it out. Now in the filtered part, there is presence of glycerol. Now this, if you want to recover, you can do so by fractional distillation. Okay. So here we have taken permitic acid, A star, that is triglyceride, the starting material. But you can also use the other acid, the structures are given. So this is permitic acid. Total number of carbon, 14. Just look at these two sides. They are actually same molecule. Now when it is CH3, then 16 CH2, that means total 17 carbon. It is stearic acid. When it is 1 and 10, 11, it is known as lauric acid. And when it is oleic acid, there is also a CC double bond in C's configuration okay so these are some of the examples of higher fatty acid uh, this can also be used that is uh, when we are making soap molecules types of soaps though we have seen this uh, synthetic method by which we can make soap which is uh, boiling fat or oil that is triglyceride with a suitable soluble hydroxide it may be koh or NaOH. Though this is a common part, but sometimes we can also add some raw materials, that is some extra molecules can be added to make different types of soap. So keeping the basic thing same, you can also add some extra substances. So to make some minor changes. Now, depending on that, we can have all these variety of soaps and different soaps are used for different uh, cleansing purposes, right? So toilet soap, it is prepared using better quality grades of fats and oils. And normally KOH is used, that is soft soap. Perfumes are also added to make them attractive. Then floating soap, to make it a very light, 
air bubbles are beaded into the product before hardening. Medicated soap, they are prepared by adding some substances which must have some medicinal value. So in some medicated soap, deodorants are also used for good smell. Then shaving soap, they contain glycerol. Remember the structure of glycerol we have already seen to prevent rapid drying. And a gum which is known as rosin that is also added to this. And the reason is when rosin is added, it forms sodium rosinate and it helps us to form more lather. Laundry soap, they contain fillers like sodium silicate borax, sodium carbonate and soap chips. They are made by running a thin sheet of melted soap onto a cool cylinder and then scrapping off the soap in small broken pieces. So they will look like some chips. So that is it is known as soap chips. Now, what is the mechanism of this cleansing action of soap that we have to see? As we know, the molecule soap, it is sodium salt of higher fatty acid. Now, remember the structure as if this part is the hydrocarbon chain, which is long, high, long, and there is only carbon and hydrogen. Now, this is hydrophobic in nature, and it is water repelling because it is not polar, it is non-polar. But the terminal where negative charge is present, so this part is nothing but COO minus, right? So CO2 minus Na plus. Now this is the ionic part carrying some charge. Now when charge is present, there is some polarity and it will be water attracting. So this is, you can also say hydrophilic and water repelling means hydrophobic. Now in aqueous medium, when we add these soap molecules, you can see different soap molecules are present. Now what will happen? As water is polar medium, so this polar part, that is these parts are polar, that is water loving part, so they will be towards water side. And the tail part, which is basically the long hydrocarbon chain or water that is hydrophobic part, now they will be concentrated as if they will be arranged in such a way as if they are not facing the water, right? Now, the dirt or grease that we want to remove from fabric or any surface, what will happen? These grease or dirt, as they are mainly no, that is hydrophobic in nature, so these hydrophobic chains, they will be attracted towards grease or dirt because non-polar will be attracted towards non-polar. It is not, that is non-polar, non-polar interaction, okay? So in this way, what will happen? This type of sar circular structure, <coughs> sphere type of structure will be formed, where in the surface you will find, it is actually two-dimensional, but just imagine as if it is three-dimensional, it is like a sphere, where in the surface of the sphere, all the polar part, ionic part will be present, because it is in the surface and outside there is water. But inside there will be hydrocarbon chain and this is dirt, grease or oil. And that is also uh, non-polar. So another picture we have. So this is dirt on dirty cloth. Now see, here these dots are basically the polar part and this tail part is the non-polar part. So they will be attracted towards dart or grease. So gradually what will happen because of this type of interaction. Now see how this picture is changing. So gradually from the surface of cloth or any other surface, this grease, it will be completely removed in the form of this type of sphere, which is also known as micelle. Micelle we basically read in study in detail in another chapter which is surface chemistry not here but uh, this type of sphere which is formed inside of the sphere we have this dart surrounded by this uh, long hydrocarbon chain okay and the outside part is polar part which is facing water because it is hydrophilic or water loving part advantage and disadvantages of soap so these advantages, they cannot be used in hard water because in hard water, there is presence of magnesium or calcium ion. 
that is uh, mg2 plus or ca2 plus ions now as they are present what will happen now the sodium salt or potassium salt which is the structure of soap now it will be can be converted to magnesium or calcium salt and these are not soluble as a result there will be formation of cardiovite precipitate of this salt of fatty acid it is like this so it is original soap molecule it is sodium stearate okay now sodium stearate 17 carbon stearic acid uh, derivative it is now interacting with calcium 2 plus which is present in hard water as a result as there are two positive charge so two stearate molecule will be surrounded with this so now the sodium salt is converted to calcium salt similarly in presence of magnesium it will be converted to magnesium salt but these type of salts are not soluble so there will be precipitate formation now the mechanism that you have seen in the previous slide that type of mechanism will not be possible so in hard water we cannot use it another problem is soaps cannot be used in acidic solution now if it is in acidic solution what will happen the sodium salt of soap now it will be converted to hydrogen that is co2 na will be converted to co2 h so which is nothing but stearic acid or palmitic acid now this free fatty acid free fatty acid it is the original acid it is not in salt form these free fatty acids are not soluble in water they are insoluble because of this insolubility now they will adhere to the fabric and thus reduce the ability of the soap to remove oils or grease so the previous mechanism that we have seen that is again not possible so these are the two disadvantage but the advantages are they are 100 percent biodegradable which is really very important and a good point and the microorganisms that are present in sewage water they can completely oxidize soap to co2 so in this way uh, degradation is possible it is not creating any pollution problem synthetic detergents synthetic detergents they have all the properties which is just like soap but actually their structure is different they are not soap like structure so you can call them soapless soap because their properties behavior are just like soap but the structures are not same now unlike soap you can use them even in hard water and also in acidic condition so this is the difference with soap and detergents having linear hydrocarbon that means in case of detergents if the hydrocarbon that is the remember the chain that we have seen in case of soap here also that type of chains are present but if that chains are linear it is biodegradable but if there is some branching present that is if it is not simple linear structures with some branching more is the branching more is the chance it will become non-biodegradable then synthetic detergents are more soluble in water and hence they can form better leather compared to soap it is advantage over soap but this is there is also disadvantage over soap fine the cleansing action of detergents are just like the cleansing action of soap so the mechanism that you have seen for soap here also same thing now synthetic detergents we can classify as anionic detergent cationic and non-ionic so in general if we see their structure it is uh, these three structures from which you can gain some idea what is the difference between these three so in this case you will not find any carboxylic acid salt that is the first point in case of anionic it is so3 minus mainly another possibility is also there we will also see that when it is cationic then in the terminal position of this long chain there is a cation that is positive charge and obviously to balance this there will be some counter run but the large part that is the main part of the molecule is containing positive charge so that is why we are calling it cationic then non-ionic there is no positive or negative charge but you can find some OH group which is having some polarity and there is some ether type of structure fine so one by one we will see all these detergents the first one is anionic detergents now in this type the large part of the molecule is basically containing negative charge again i am saying to balance this negative charge there will be some positive ion but that is not the part of large molecule the major part of the molecule is containing negative charge 
that is why it is called anionic detergent the cleansing activity of anionic detergents is regulated by the anionic portion of the molecules obviously now what are their use they are used commonly in home such as to wash clothes in toothpaste etc now under this also two possibilities are there one is sodium alkyl sulfate sodium alkyl sulfate first there is long chain then oxygen then so3 minus counter ion is na plus another possibility is sodium which is the counter ion basically but first there is some alkyl chain then benzene ring and then o so3 okay so these are the two types sodium alkyl sulfate and alkyl benzene sulfonate so the first one sodium alkyl sulfate these are obtained from long chain alcohols containing 12 to 18 carbon so when we prepare them we have to start from some long chain alcohols then these long chain alcohols it is treated with strong h2so to produce high molecular mass alkyl hydrogen sulfate after this step we will use some alkali which will form salt so here you can see some examples you can find similarity with this structure also sodium lauryl sulfate which is coming from this particular this acid then stearic acid so these are the examples stearic acid you can remember it when this c70 fine so now we will see how it is synthesized so we have taken concentrated sulfuric acid h2so4 and this is a long chain alcohol and this alcohol oh in presence of h2so4 now it is converted to oso3h next step is addition of alkali now this h is converted to sodium so ultimately you are getting roso3na this type of structure the second one is sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate these are sodium salt of long chain alkyl sulfonic acid so see here we have taken dodecyl benzene so dodecyl benzene is treated with concentrated h2so4 so this para position there will be insertion of this so3 h group now this in presence of nah this h is converted to na okay so it is sodium para dodecyl benzene sulfonate okay actually this oxygen is not present it is, a, it is like this r benzene ring then so3 na okay so this is the difference between these two but both of them are under anionic detergent that is uh, common cationic detergent in this type the major part of their molecule are cation and it is the cationic part of the molecule which is involved in their cleansing action so it is just the reverse right so if you look at the structure it will be clear this is actually counter but if you look at the main part it is carrying positive charge and what is the name benzyl cetyl dimethyl cetyl is basically this group total 15 carbon then one carbon dimethyl because two methyl groups are present and benzyl group is present phch2 so that is why the name is benzyl left hand side cetyl right hand side and dimethyl these two are dimethyl then ammonium chloride because after all it is ammonium salt ammonia is nh3 but when i am saying ammonium salt it is basically nh4 plus but here we do not have four hydrogen attached to nitrogen instead we have four different alkyl group basically two methyl groups one cetyl group one benzyl group but you can find some similarity with nh4 plus and as if it is derivative of nh4 plus another example cetyl this is cetyl then trimethyl so here we have total three methyl groups so this is also ammonium salt counter ion chloride but the main part is positive that is why it is cationic detergent and the cationic part is actually involved in cleansing action not the cl minus part you can also call them invert soap because in soap molecule remember the structure it is rco2 minus then na plus so the main part is negative but now main part is positive so that is it is invert soap 
and because their tensing action is because of presence of cations but in soap it is because of anions you can also say it is as if invert structure of anionic detergent that is also true they are quaternary ammonium salt of amine because four groups are attached to nitrogen and maximum valence of nitrogen 3 but here we have four groups that is why it is positive and we have some alkyl groups and the counter ions may be chloride bromide or acetate in this case it is chloride what is their use used as germicide but they are expensive so that is why for day to day purpose at home it is not used so much used they have limited use and uh, the popular cationic detergent is cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide the second picture which is used as hair conditioner non ionic detergent so here we do not have any positive or negative charge they have a neutral group in their molecule but how they will interact with water there is no positive or negative charge but they can interact through hydrogen bond okay that is their surface active group because in surface there is no negative or positive charge but they can form hydrogen bond because of presence of some oh group they are monoesters of polyhydric alcohols or polyether that means several ether group will be present they are okay let me show you how they are prepared so we have taken ethylene glycol and ethylene sorry it is epoxide okay it is epoxide so in presence of this now what will happen ch2 ch2 o this part will be repeated several times right and as if this is ch2 ch2 oh so both are actually source of two carbon but here if this oh is attacking at this carbon this co bond will be broken so in this way we can get a polyethylene glycol so ethylene glycol is coming several times so that is why it is polyethylene glycol and now this is polyethylene glycol is reacting with stearic acid now what will happen this co2h group it can interact with this oh group so oh and co2h together it will make ester so ultimately we are getting some ester then we also have oxygen and both side alkyl group that means it is polyether and at the end you have oh which is capable of forming hydrogen bond with water so they are mainly effective for this washing and other situation but inorganic ions are not allowed so in this case you do not have ion but still cleansing action is possible so advantages are synthetic detergents can be used in hard water that we have already seen you can use them in acidic medium they are more soluble in water lather formation is possible synthetic detergent produce lather in cold water also they are stronger cleansing action compared to soap because they can decrease surface tension of water to a greater extent and these advantages are highly branched hydrocarbon chain which can cause cause pollution if it is linear chain it is fine now side chain of detergent they can stop bacteria from attacking and breaking the chains resulting slow degradation so degradation is not so easy as a result chance of pollution is very high but nowadays to avoid this branching is kept to minimum we try to keep it as linear as possible so that detergents become easily biodegradable and pollution we can prevent here we have a question when stearic acid reacts with polyethylene glycol the product so formed belongs to a class of it is actually non ionic detergents remember the last one with which of these not an example of synthetic reagent uh, synthetic detergent not an example of okay so see this is so3 sulfonic acid this is co2 any so this is actually not detergent it is soap because we have to find that molecule which is not synthetic detergent otherwise a is anionic detergent this is cationic this is non -ionic. so correct answer is option b so we are at the end of the session will in the classroom thank you for listening